Hello and welcome to this DDI What's New CADcast. My name is Cody Armstrong and the topic today is What's New 2014 SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM. So we're focusing on the new features for the 2014 release in SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM and I want to start this with automated cache management. Probably one of the biggest enhancements for 2014 release in Enterprise PDM is this enhancement to cache options. I'm going to jump into the software here and get into an example of this. In the administration tool, what you'll notice when you're defining either a group or a user is an option on the bottom left here for cache options. And the way this works is it works on a per folder basis. So I can define on a per folder basis how do I want the cache to be managed. And you really have two options. You have the option to clear the cache during logout, which of course means it will purge all cached files when the user logs out of that folder, right, or out of the vault, excuse me. And then you have the option to refresh the cache during the login. And of course what that means is the next time that user logs in, he, get a, he gets a refreshed version of the cache. And I think this is really useful in the scenario of maybe like uh, design library parts or templates where I always want the user to have the latest version of those files. And so by forcing them to clear any cache and then refresh that cache upon login logout, I ensure that that user always has the latest version of that template or that design library part. So that's really where I think it's useful. Um, you will define it when you're defining either a group or a user. And you, again, you'll see on the left-hand side, cache options. And it is a per-folder basis. So you have to define it on a per-folder basis. So that's the new cache management in Enterprise PDM 2014. Let's move on. So the next thing I want to get into is the consolidated delayed and state notifications. And this isn't really something I can show. It's just something, a small change that you'll notice with the 2014 release if you use delayed in state notifications. And just a brief refresh, a delayed in state notification just means this file has been in this state for a certain amount of time and you're notifying the user saying, hey, please update this. Um, so a file has been delayed in a certain state for a given amount of time. In previous versions, when you had a delayed in state notification, you had them on a per file basis. So if I had 15 parts in a delayed in state or, or were in a state that was delayed, it has been there for a long time, you got 15 separate notifications about those files. Well now all of those have been consolidated. So if I have 15 files that have been in a certain state for a certain period of time, they are quote unquote delayed, you will get one notification showing you all 15 files. So they've been consolidated in the sense that you don't have to now open each individual notification or email or however you have it set up on a per part basis. It's now consolidating all of them to show you here's all the files that are delayed in state. So again, just a small change, nothing you're, uh, to really show in that scenario. It's just what you'll notice now is delayed in state notifications have been consolidated, so you'll get one notification for all files that have been delayed in state. So moving on. So the next big enhancement is to dynamic notifications. and I want to pop up uh, an example of this just to show you how this works. So dynamic notifications are not new. Um, when I change the state on a file, for instance, I could always dynamically choose how, who got notified. What you'll notice is when I go to change a state, for instance, I'm just going to push this through to submit for analysis. Um, the, again, the dynamic notifications are not new, so the option to notify people dynamically in the list on the right-hand side is not new. Um, what is new is the ability to filter through this list. So if you had a really long list, in previous versions you were stuck scrolling through that list to find the name. Now I can quickly type through the filter the name and then check the box for that particular user. So really useful in scenarios where I have really long lists, maybe big groups of people, and it just helps to be able to type the name out rather than scroll up and down the list to find that user. So that's the new filter for dynamic notifications Enterprise PDM. Let's move on to the next one. So the next one on my list is extracting hidden SOLIDWORKS bombs. And in previous versions, if you had hidden a bill of materials, either in the assembly or in the drawing file, when you check that file in, Enterprise PDM wouldn't be able to pull that information uh, into a SOLIDWORKS bomb. And now what you'll notice is a new option under Display Options to extract hidden bomb from SOLIDWORKS files on check-in. With this checked, even if the bill of materials is hidden from view, it will still extract that information when that file is checked in. So really useful if you like to insert build materials but then hide them later for complexity or just to make things simpler, you can now extract them even if they're hidden. So that's the new extract hidden SOLIDWORKS bombs. Let's move on to the next one. 
Okay, so in previous versions, the always work with latest version of files option was very much a hard thing. You either always worked with the latest or you did not. Um, in, in the latest version of the software, there's some flexibility to this that's been added. I want to describe first how it's set up and just a brief explanation as to how it works. What you'll notice is it's an individual user or group setting. So if I go into, for instance, engineers and I go to settings, on the left-hand side, you'll see reference dialog. And the option for always work with latest version of the files has been there for years. What you'll notice is new is this enable the git version command in SOLIDWORKS add-in. And what this allows me to do is do a git version only from SOLIDWORKS and only if I have this specific setting set. So it may uh, be the scenario where maybe I only want a certain group of engineers to be able to get older versions, but everyone else um, limit that, that functionality. Um, the big thing here is it only works from the SOLIDWORKS add-in, and that's an important distinction. But what this means is as a user, if I check that file out, even with git latest, always work with latest version on, I can still do a git. And that's the big thing. So with Enterprise PDM, if I checked that box before, um, it was I didn't have the option to get older versions, period. Um, now it's a little bit more flexible. You can check the option, which allows the user in the SOLIDWORKS add-in to still get older versions. So it's just a little bit more flexibility in the always work with latest uh, version uh, option. So moving on. So tying in with that flexible theme is the flexible retrieval of reference files during checkout. And this is an administrator level setting. So as an administrator, I would set this. And again, it's in the same settings as the last option I was just referring to, the enable git version command and SOLIDWORKS add-in. What you'll notice is in the user or group settings under reference dialog, a new option to auto-select reference files to get latest when checking out. And there's a couple other options here that are new as well. Check out files silently and try to check out all referenced files. And the way these work is typically most users want to pull the latest version of referenced documents when they're pulling out the top level. So think of a top level assembly. I want to check out the top level. I also want to check out um, and get the latest, I should say. I want to get the latest of all its sub-assemblies um, when I'm checking out the top level. But if you don't want that behavior, maybe there's a scenario where I have this cached version of an, uh, an older version of a sub-assembly and I want to continue to work with that cached version, I would want to make sure that this is unchecked so that it does not automatically select referenced uh, getting the latest version of reference documents. If you do want it to automatically pull the latest version of reference documents, you can check this. Also nice is you can check them out silently. So I don't have to go through and check out the top level and then check out each subassembly. It'll automatically pull that all the subassembly referenced files and check them out as well. Um, and it will try and check out all referenced files. Uh, when the file is checked out itself. So, so just some a little bit more options when you're retrieving documents, when you go to check out documents, how does it handle those referenced files? Just a little bit more control than we had in previous versions. Moving on. So one of the last things on this slide is the increased workflow performance. And this isn't really something I have to show you or an option or a setting. It's just one of those things that will be faster with a 2014 release. And the big thing here is if you in previous versions had um, performance issues when transitioning files through the workflow um, that were related to high latency. So if you had high latency issues, latency issues in general with Enterprise PDM, transitioning files through the workflow, that should be improved. Um, they made some modifications to increase the performance in situations where you had high latency problems in the past. So let's move on. So jump into my next slide. The next thing I'm going to go over is the enhancements to navigating tree structures in Enterprise PDM. And let's jump into a real quick example. Let's say I wanted to check out a file. I'm going to go ahead and check out this assembly. One of the first things you'll notice when you go to do check in, check out, change state, copy tree, a few other functions, um, is the tree structure in Enterprise PDM. So you'll see a tree structure with collapse and um, expand arrows. You'll also see these collapse and expand arrows in where used and contains tab in Enterprise. So that's new, the expanded collapse functionality. We also have show all levels or show top level only. Right, so I can specify like a nested view or all levels. Also very cool is the ability to go up and down in warnings. So I can index through all the different warnings 
without having to scroll up and down my list. So I have these icons here to go up and down uh, in my warnings, and it just allows me a quick way to get through. Um, maybe check in, check out. Like I said before, Copy Tree also has this uh, change state. You'll see this functionality. Um, but it just allows me a little bit easier interface uh, for navigating these tree structures in Enterprise PDM. So moving on. So user-defined custom columns is definitely a nice enhancement for 2014. And I want to take a second to explain this. So jumping back to my checkout dialog. In previous versions, we never really had a lot of control over what variables showed up in the columns in checkout, check in, maybe even uh, the contains tab in Enterprise PDM. Now what you'll notice is if I right click one of these columns, you'll see an option for more and the ability to choose any variable in Enterprise PDM. So if I wanted to be able to see a specific variable, maybe filter by that, um, in a checkout dialog or the contains tab, I can do that just by right clicking the columns, going to more, and then choosing the variable I want to see in that column. And it just gives me a little bit more control. We didn't have access to every variable in previous releases. Now you can. So you can add just about anything, any variable you have in Enterprise, you can add it to a checkout dialog or the contains tab, and it gives you a lot more control. So moving on. So the next enhancement is to the ability to compare versions of reference to documents in, in assemblies. And so I'm going to jump into SOLIDWORKS. And it's important to note this is a SOLIDWORKS add-in enhancement. And if I go into the Enterprise PDM options in SOLIDWORKS add-in, under view setting, you're going to see a new display information display type. Uh, so information to display drop-down, this is not new. But what is new is the reference version option in the drop-down here. And what this allows me to do is, in my case, in my example, I'm going to display it as its own column. And so it, what it'll do is it'll show me what the referenced version of that part or that subassembly is in my top level. And the really the big thing that this adds is now I can quickly go through and look at all my subassemblies and see, okay, this subassembly is referencing version 2. I'll do a get latest. But allows me to quickly view that information from the task pane in, in SOLIDWORKS. So I, I'm going to set it to information to display, set it to reference version. I'm going to tell it to display in a column of its own and then call that column reference version. I'll hit OK. And what you're going to notice is in the task pane, if I drag this out, what you'll see is a referenced version column. See it right here, referenced version, and it shows me the referenced version of each one of these parts or subassemblies in that top level assembly. So it's really easy for me to find a subassembly that may be referencing out of date version and do a quick get latest on that subassembly. But this is an option in the SOLIDWORKS task pane uh, for Enterprise PDM. Let's move on. The next one, and that is version-free variables and workflow transitions. SOLIDWORKS added the ability to create uh, version-free variables a few releases ago. And basically what it means is I can type in a certain value for a variable, and it doesn't require me to check out and create a new version of that file just to add the variable to the file itself. Um, now what we've added in the 2014 release is support and workflow transitions. So now when you add an action, to set a variable in a workflow transition. If that variable is version free, it will not create a new version of the part. That's one big change from previous releases. It's important to note, if you have a combination of version free and non-version free variables, it will still have to create a new version uh, if the workflow transition sets both variables. But if your workflow transition sets just version free variables, it will no longer create a new version just to do this. Okay, so that's version-free variables and the enhancement to workflow transitions. Last one on my list. So the last thing for this particular webcast is visibility of child quick information warnings and parent assemblies. And this is one big limitation in previous versions. In the SOLIDWORKS add-in, in the Enterprise PDM task pane for SOLIDWORKS, we've always had this child quick info column which gives me information about the children parts or subassemblies of this top level assembly. In previous versions, however, it would only show me what pertained to that subassembly or part. So for instance, this part here, it would only show me the information associated with that particular assembly. But if that assembly had subassemblies, it would not show me the child quick info for the subassemblies. That's what's changed 
in the latest release. So you can see if I click on the top level here, it shows me not only do I have one file that's not found in the vault, but I also have the local files, the same version. So it's giving me information not just about the top level, but the sub-assemblies within that. And so this makes it really easy if I'm trying to dig down and find you know, the sub-assembly that may have an issue. I can look at the child quick info and see everything associated with not only this, this assembly, but all sub-assemblies within that assembly. So the child quick info just gives me a little bit more information than I got in previous releases. Helps me drill down and find the sub-assemblies um, that may be older versions or have issues. So that's it for this particular CAD cast. For more, visit us at www.youtube.com forward slash ddicad or www.ddicad.com forward slash tech center. Thank you.